a student, the assumption was that life tags along with the physical evolution of the Earth. Uh, life is a passive follower of environmental evolution. This view is being replaced by the increased recognition that life drives many aspects of Earth evolution. For example, consider these rocks. Uh, first, there's this one called a banded iron formation. Um, and there's also another one called a red bed here. This is basically a red soil. Um, now, it turns out that banded iron formations make up about 90% of the iron mined on Earth. These turn up in the rock record about two and a half billion years ago, but not before. Why two and a half billion years? The development of an oxygenated atmosphere at 2.5 billion years ago is the reason. Uh, oxygen from photosynthesis completely remade the surface of Earth by speeding up weathering rates, precipitating iron from the surface oceans, making banded iron formations, um, and excluding oxygen uh, intolerant microbes from much of the Earth's surface. The second rock type is shale. Um, these are made principally out of clay, uh, and these become much more abundant in the rock record about 800 million years ago. Why? You know, what was the reason that these didn't exist before that time? The widespread development of lichens and terrestrial vegetation, as it turns out, produced acids that convert feldspar into clay. So, if there's no plants, uh, their clay stones and shales will also be rare. Um, it turns out that uh, the first surface vegetation evolves about 800 to 700 million years ago, and it produces organic matter in terrestrial soils that was critical for the production of clay by chemical weathering. Before that time, there was little clay on the land or in the ocean, and therefore no shale. Okay, a third type of rock is coal, uh, this nice shiny black rock. This stuff started to accumulate abundantly about 350 million years ago. Why not before? Also, why was most coal formed between about 100 and 350 million years ago, but much less was formed before or since that time? Now, it turns out that nearly the whole legacy of our fossil fuel industry is based on this stuff. Coal represents the development of forests about 350 million years ago. The burial of lignin and woody plant material created the first coal deposits. Before that, we did not have coal at all. Um, so, an, a lithology that directly evolved from the evolution of land plants. All right, the fourth rock type is chalk and limestones. Um, chalk is extensively mined to make concrete. This stuff started to accumulate about 250 million years ago. Why not before? Well, it turns out that chalk is a biogenic sediment made by the evolutionary appearance of calcareous plankton in the ocean. So until the calcareous plankton came along, no chalk anywhere. Um, the last one I'm gonna talk about is my little necklace here. This one is made out of New Zealand argillite uh, and carved in this fishhook shape. The argillite is 290 million year old mud from the seafloor of Panthalassia, the giant ocean that once covered more than half the globe in the Permian. The former seafloor sediment is black uh, because the ocean was anoxic. Uh, there wasn't any oxygen in it, and, um, and it isn't really until the modern environment comes along uh, where in the modern deep Pacific we would find tan or white sediments indicating fully oxic conditions. It turns out that the ocean did not become widely oxygenated until about 100 to 200 million years ago, and therefore no argillite younger than that. Now, it turns out these things are all owed to life. Life is the driver of geology here, creating or driving extinct the very rocks we see around us. Um, this idea that life has completely altered Earth is a core theme of the class. Before these, uh, beyond these things, um, in this class, I will argue that, first of all, life has greatly sped up planetary metabolism. Biological evolution has affected how fast nutrients are recycled, how fast weathering happens on land, and how fast erosion happens as well. Second, life has also buffered Earth's climate, dampening out the big swings in climate that used to happen. Chalk, for example, is critical in buffering planetary climate as it will ultimately weather to take up more than half of the CO2 produced by industrial civilization. This lowly rock will eventually save the planet from our own pollution and prevent a runaway greenhouse from developing.